Excellent. Can you all hear me? Oh, yeah, I can hear you. I can hear me. Um, I have three comments or three little introductory notes. Uh, first, uh, this is um, Experimental Economics has accepted this paper recently, so it's forthcoming. Uh, it's joint work with uh, Oleg Koronok and Laura Azzolini at uh, Virginia Commonwealth University. Laura has joined us as she's in the audience. And I want to thank John List and his colleagues and the Templeton Foundation for putting together a wonderful program. Uh, Laura and I were talking about we want to be two people to be in two places at once uh, for some of the sessions coming up. Uh, we thank John for doing such a good job putting together the program and, of course, the Templeton Foundation for their support. Um, quick outline. I like to tell people what I found early on, so I'm not no surprises. Uh, the, the one way to view the paper is we ask the question, or we try to answer the question, is giving equal to not taking? So I'm going to talk about what I mean by not taking, what I mean by equivalence. We'll go, and uh, why do we care about that? Talk about some motivation in the literature. We'll describe an experiment and results. Uh, we, the, the implication of our results. And finally, what might be an application for practitioners. Main points. We conduct an experiment to determine if giving is equal to not taking. Uh, if so, if we find that these two things are equivalent, uh, we argue that impure altruism accounts for recent findings that the payoff to recipients decreases when the taking option is introduced. We find that giving is not equal to not taking. There are differences. Um, in particular, we find the payoff to the recipients is lower when the payoff possibilities are equal and the dictator must take more to, obtain, to obtain the same payoff. Implication, the cold prickle of taking exceeds the warm glow of giving. Uh, practitioners might be, might be able to use this to their advantage uh, by an, an, an increase of nations by somehow imposing a default gift in their, solic in their, solic in their solicitations. So what do we mean by uh, not taking, giving, and the equivalents? Consider two games, game one and game two. Game one, is that my red mark? Oh, yeah. Uh, game one's a very standard dictator game. ED is the endowment to the dictator. I give the dictator $20. The recipient has nothing. The dictator can pass some, all, or none of the endowment to the recipient. Game two uh, would be a taking game. Uh, endowment to the dictator has gone down to about five. Five dollars has gone to the re recipient. And now, but now the dictator has the, the option to take. Uh, let's just suppose that the dictator in game one uh, gives $2. All right? For whatever reason, they're given $2. Uh, suppose, now what are they going to do in the game where they can take? Um, they, can take they can take some money. Suppose they take $1. They left $4 on the table. They could have taken four more. They didn't take $4. Our question is, do they, do they view that $4 they didn't take the same as a gift of $4 to the, to the, to the recipient? If so, they meant they passed in game one, $2, uh, implies they should take three in game two and not take $2 in game two. If they take three in game two, the given in game one equals the not taking in game two, $2, and the payoffs to both parties are, are identical in those two settings. So if taking, if, if not taking the same as giving, we'd expect to see similar outcomes and game one and game two. Motivation comes from recent work by List and Bardsley. They examine what happens when you, when you introduce the taking option into a dictator game. Um, they don't run the games just like this, but for example, we could compare games two and three. Game two is the, uh, 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 the game where the dictator has 15, recipient has five, and the dictator has the option to take. Game three, Dictator has 15, receiving has 5, dictator can only pass. What uh, uh, List and Bardsley find is that the payoff to the recipient is lower in games that resemble game 2 than games that resemble game 3. Giving the dictator the option to take winds up reducing the uh, payoff to the recipient. Uh, my reading of their papers is they find this re these results disturbing. Uh, List says the data suggests that current interpretation of the dictator game data likely need revision. Uh, Bardsley says that the reversing of generosity between treatments is inconsistent with any social preference. 
with any orthodox social preference account. And somewhere in the, in the penumbrum of their discussion, I think there's some, some concerns that maybe this experimental work is just we're barking at the wrong tree. That we, you know, it's it's to totally an artifact of the laboratory and uh, might not be very, very, very useful for practitioners. Uh, we argue that impure altruism resolves the contradictions observed by Liston Bargely if the amount past P and the amount not taken in T are equivalent sources of warm glow. Suppose utility function in, uh, has, has three arguments, the payoff to the dictator, the payoff to the recipient, and S, where S is the sum of the amount passed and the amount not taken. If, if given that uh, a utility function, the effect on payoff possibilities of adding the option to take is equal to the effect of transferring endowment from the recipient to the dictator. So I'm going to talk about a little bit, what do we mean by these payoff possibilities and, and what's the equivalence of these two different effects? Taking option. Uh, I've got two, uh, I'll call them budget lines. I think a, a more correct line is a um, payoff possibilities, but it's just easier for me to say budget lines. Right? Uh, scenario two, this is actually one of the scenarios that we use in our experiment. Scenario two, uh, dictator has $15 in endowment, recipient has five, all you can do is pass. Well, the budget line goes from A to B. Uh, the, the recipient, uh, that's the recipient payoff is, is uh, on the vertical axis. Recipient is guaranteed $5. If we come along and now add the option to take, we extend point B and stretch it down to point C, the dictator can now move from B to C by taking. All right. What Bliss and Barsley find is that the payoff in this scenario, scenario three, is lower than the, the uh, scenario to the recipient in, in, uh, in, in scenario two. And they do a nice job. They, it's, not, it's not accounted for people who were stuck there and jumped down when you give the option to take. So it's people, people will be above point B and they'll wind up moving to some point between B and C. This type of uh, budget line is, are, are, are identical when we talk about transferring endowment. Uh, scenario two, again, endowment to the dictator is 15, endowment to the recipient is 5. Uh, what happens if we transfer a $5 of endowment from the recipient to the dictator? We now get budget line that goes from A to C, transferring the endowment extends point B down to point C. People have studied what happens when you transfer endowment. Many studies look at the uh, imperfect crowding out, um, and they find that as you transfer, it, it, I'll probably jump ahead here, let's see. Yeah. Um, they find that as we transfer endowment from the recipient to the dictator, that transfer imperfectly crowds in donations. And as a result, the the payoff to the recipient decreases. There we go. I knew it was somewhere. Bolton and Katak is an example. Uh, they examine what happens you transfer when you, as you transfer payoff endowment from the recipient to the dictator. Uh, the, the payoff to the recipient falls. Um, the, the, uh, the increase in giving is less than The increase in giving is less than the transfer of the endowment. Uh, now people have studied this, and, and uh, one explanation for this, uh, for this effect, in the, uh, uh, one explanation for imperfect crowding in is impure altruism. Impure altruism is consistent with the reduction in recipient payoff when the endowment transferred to the dictator. Impure altruism says there's three arguments in the utility, utility function. The dictator cares about his or her payoff, the payoff to the recipient, and they also derive some utility directly from P, the amount passed, which we call warm glow. Uh, this warm glow giving predicts imperfect crowding in. The optimal amount passed will increase by less than the amount of the endowment transferred. Therefore, the payoff to the recipient will decrease as we do this endowment transfer stuff. We argue that imperfect crowding in and adding the option to take could have what they would have, be strong, they would have the same effects if giving is the same as not taking. Suppose utility is now to change, make, make a small change utility function. Instead of having P as a third argument, we have it as S. 
where S is the sum of the amount passed, the amount not taken. Uh, adding the budget line would give me the same uh, imperfect credit and out effect. Uh, the optimal amount S would increase by less than the op option to take, and the amount to pay off to the recipient decreases. Uh, another paper that, that uh, our co authors I've done show that this uh, imperfect, uh, impure altruism rationalizes choices in giving games. So if we find that um, not taking and giving are the same, this, uh, the, the 2013 paper would, uh, could be used to sort of claim that the that, uh, imperfect impure altruism uh, resolves the contradictions that List and Barsley observe. Experiment, each subject shows how much to pass or take in each of nine scenarios. We conducted five sessions, 106 subjects. Uh, each subject was both a dictator and recipient. We used Z-Tree. Here are the nine scenarios. You can see that we vary. Sometimes we transfer, dic sometimes we transfer endowment. Sometimes we uh, change the, the amount that the dictator could take. Uh, let me do three scenarios to sort of uh, show you what we, what we can do with it. Scenario one is a standard dictator game. Dictator had $20, they could pass as, as, as all they wanted to. Scenario two, we transfer endowment. Uh, the, uh, the, endowment the recipient has $5 endowment. Dictator had uh, 15 And scenario three, we give them the option to take. All right. look, if we look at scenario one, that's a standard dictator game. We can compare the results there with the standard results in many studies. By comparing one and two, we can, look, we can sort of compare ourselves with imperfect crowd and end studies sort of Bolton could talk like, like results. By comparing, uh, let's see what's the other one. By comparing two and three, we can compare our results with listen largely. What's the effect of the option to take? Our study compares scenario one with scenario three. What happens when the dictator has the same budget possibility, but they get to a point on the curve differently? In one case, they gotta give. In the other case, they gotta, they gotta take. Do you get the same, the same results? Uh, we find that the results in, in scenario one are, are similar to standard gain. Uh, we find that the results are consistent with imperfect crowd and out. Our results sort of look like what Bargely and uh, uh, what uh, Bolton could talk report. Blah, blah, blah. We are out of, all right. Um, yeah, we don't care about that. We find that um, uh, the results are inconsistent with imperfect crowd and in when the option to take is added or increased. We get results that look like what listed Bargely re re report. If you give people the taking option, the payoff to the recipient goes down, even if you account for the constrained choices that, that the dictator has. So those three results sort of say that our results are looking like what we see other people getting. Fourth finding is our main, re main result. We find that giving is not equal to not taking. Dictators tend to give less than they don't take. Uh, we compare various scenarios where the budget lines are the same, and that result is consistent and um, uh, uh, st significant. Uh, the payoff possibilities, whoops, the payoff possibilities are equal in each comparison, but on average, the payoff to the recipient, yes, increases significantly as the amount the dictator must take to maintain a constant payoff to the recipient increases. Uh, the best example, I think, is to compare scenarios one and nine. Uh, here we're comparing only decisions made by dictators who were not selfish in all nine scenarios. Uh, you had to, you had, you know, uh, if, if scenario one, you had $20 as dictator, recipient had nothing, you could only give, the average gift was 5.37. Scenario nine, the recipient had all the endowment, and the dictator could only take. The dictator in that case took a little less than $12 on average, so the average payoff, they, they, they did not take on average $8.36. So they didn't take $8.36 there, they gave $5.37 there, the payoff were the same, the recipient wound up with more money in scenario nine than scenario one. Um, again, we find a similarity between giving and not taking. Andreoni found a similar result uh, in a uh, public goods game. Uh, over contrary to and Andreoni, we find that the warm glow of giving is weaker than the cold prickle of taking. He found it went the other way. Um, now we can skip that. Implication for practitioners. Philanthropies might increase donations by framing a reduction in a donation as taken from the, from the philanthropy. We're preparing a field experiment with a, a group in, in Richmond called Plan G. Um, and sort of, here's a typical screen, here's a screenshot of a typical website. You can make a donation. We're sort of going to ask the question, what happens if there's there some kind of a default gift that was preloaded in there? 
Okay? And you've now got a box you can check to add a donation, or you've got a box you can check to reduce your donation. Try to make them make a decision. I got a default, I'm already it's preloaded to give a certain amount of money, and to make that thing go down, I gotta do I gotta take action. That might create this uh, cold prickle of uh, taking and will allow philanthropies to increase their receipts. And I'm probably out of time. How'd I do? I got a bunch. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All, uh, in, our, in our world, it was all there was twenty dollars at stake in every setting, so we didn't vary the uh, the, the budget line didn't shift. I don't have any. Sorry, I'll think. I'll think. You want to fire him? Yeah, I don't. Um, uh, I, some of the interesting work I think has come out lately is uh, uh, sort of work that's revealing uh, that at least in the lab, many people are I'm going to call them guilty givers. Uh, work by I can't remember the people, but the Wiggle Room and um, oh, shoot, who does stuff? But anyway, um, uh, a second prediction I've got on this experiment is that we'll see the click-through rate may decrease when people hit this thing. I've got to decrease. I don't want to do that. Well, they don't have to do it. They can just click X and you know they can, they can leave the site. So I think there there is some. Um, I think I, I do worry about uh, other effects on giving that might uh, uh, reduce the donation to the to a to a philanthropy if you have this default gift. I think we're heading the same direction. Does that make, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, well, um, I mean, sometimes this, uh, uh, the question is, do I know who you are? Uh, you know, um, and uh, I think one of the interesting variables is exactly what is, how do you figure out that default gift? Uh, and that's something we're going to try to explore. I, I'm, I, you're, and I'm, if, but if I, if I know your donor history, I might, the default gift might be based on your donor history. That's, that's something worth exploring. Yeah, I suppose you, right. Yeah, I mean, we'd have, you know, donation amount would be preloaded, and it's over here. And if you click uh, reduce it, it'll go down. Web's a, web's a great thing. Um, <laughs> but you could say last year you gave this much. We are hoping to see you increase your gift by 5%, so we preloaded that amount. So I don't know how you phrase that well, but that's, we're going to think long and hard about how to phrase that as kindly and gently as we can. Um, Oh, really? See what happens because, it's like, especially you sort of say to me, you know, I count, we count on your thank you for your gift last year, and yeah. can you really count on those dollars, see whatever we yeah. do? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I think yeah. it's just technology there. Yeah, yeah. One more question. Um, you mentioned that you have a lot of people I'm wondering about the implications for what I've seen as a separate strand of literature, it seems they're connected, which is positive versus negative framing. 
Right, I, I, and, and that's uh, Andreoni's paper that we mentioned, it was pure framing. It was a public goods game and they just said, in one case they said if you give, everybody else gets this, and the other one says, if you give the public account, everybody gains this much. If you give to your personal account, everybody loses that much. Yeah. Um, uh, and, but he found significant differences, yeah. Yeah, 